Hi guys. Happy Wednesday. Happy Glitter Pit Day. I know, it's like the same thing, but oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you guys in the Glitter Pit early bird chat. So excited to see you all there. We are making a really super fun card today. And I want to give a big shout out to Anna Mendez. She's the one that showed our my team of Glitter Queens. She did a quick video and showed us how to make this card. So big shout out to Anna. I love it, Anna. I love your card. You guys might remember this card. Let me flip this over. Put you guys in picture and picture really quick. There we go. You guys might remember this card. I shared it with you guys last week. So this was her card. Isn't it awesome? Oh my God. And it's so easy. Seriously, the most time consuming part will be the cut, the strips. But I got that narrowed down to a really super easy way to do that. So we're going to make this type of card. And I do have two other samples that I will show you at the end of the video today. All right. But we're going to make the one with the Latte Love. And um, we're going to use designer paper instead of cardstock for the panels. And I feel like that's going to make the card less bulky. All right. So... Go grab some designer paper. It can just be, you know, it doesn't have to be very pretty just to make a sample for your card. So you guys know how to put this part of the inside together for the card. So let me show you the one we're going to make today. So this is the, the finished one that I made earlier. And then I'm going to change it up a little bit with the designer paper. But this is the one that that, that looks like with the coffee, like the espresso little coffee cups in the designer paper. Don't you love it? And then of course we're gonna make a belly band because this card, I don't think it really needs a belly band, but I think it adds to it to keep it nice and closed. So we'll be doing everything. The belly band, the card, the, you know, the pop-up pieces. So let's go through some, uh, first let's go ahead and do an early bird glitter spinner. I have, you know what, let me give these away. I have some of these paper butterfly accents and I did use these on one of my sample cards that I want to show you later. So we're going to give a package of these away. They are very nice and I believe they are carrying over, which is even better, right? So let me get my spinner. Remember, in order to get into the early bird glitter spinner, all you have to do is just leave a comment during the live. Where's my, oh, there's my stylist. Woo! My heart was beating so fast, I thought I lost my stylist. <laughs> my gosh. Because this is how I control my iPad. All right, so let's do it. Leave a comment, and then we'll do another glitter spinner at the end of the hour, too. So just remind me to do that. All right, so these are for the paper butterflies right now. Okay? Let's do it. <clears throat> let's spin it. Spinning the comments. Ooh, and you guys were all in there early. Some of us are having warm weather. Some of us are having freezing weather. So it's kind of weird. I'm having freezing weather. Rena! <laughs> Rena, Rena. Rena is a glitter queen. So Rena, I have your address. Congratulations, Rena. I will get these butterflies sent out to you tonight. Because <clears throat> my hubby is taking me to dinner tonight. Yes! Don't we love that? It's like no cooking, no cleaning. It makes it easy. So yeah, he's taking me out to dinner tonight, which is nice. So Rena, you got the butterflies. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> All right. Let me go ahead and get that off of the screen. And what did you say? Just, I just hope my internet behaves today so I can watch the whole program. Me too, Rena. Well, there's always the replay, so don't worry. The, oh, the replay will be there, so in case something happens. All right, so let's go over some updates. There's not that many, but remember, next week, I believe it's, is it Monday or Tuesday, the last chance list with the discounts go live. And I believe it's at midnight, just going over to the 9th. So I think it's, let me count it out. It's, um... I want to say it's Tuesday, early, early morning. If you guys want to get all the deals and the specials before they sell out. There are some things that are selling out already. So make sure you're getting your favorites, all right? So that list, 
goes live with the discounts next week. So get ready. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's a race. All right, and then also, this is the host code that we're using. This is the last week. I'm going to cash this in probably on Friday. So then you'll get your small gift mid to towards the late part of April. And then I'll open up another host code on my website so you can see that on my blog, all right? But this one is still current. So if you want to use this one, remember, just use your host code for orders under $150. So you get the small gift. Anything over $150, you'll get the Stampin' Rewards. Remember that? All right. And then this is the two catalogs that are retiring. Remember the list, you have a carry... Not a start. You do have a carryover list, but you have... A last chance list for the mini catalog, which is the January through April. And there are a lot of bundles that are carrying over, but the bundle price is retiring. And then also the annual catalog. This is the 2023 through 2024 annual catalog. So both of these catalogs are retiring. And the last day to get the items off the last chance list will be April 20, or, sorry, April 30th. Okay. So make sure, please get your favorites while you can. And then the new catalog starts on May 30th. Why do I say May 31st? May 1st. And I did order all my customers the catalogs that have placed an order with me within the last six months. So please make sure your husband's or significant other, when they see this catalog, they don't throw it away thinking it's something else. I'm just saying, it looks like it's not a Stampin' Up! catalog. So, um, but this is the new Stampin' Up! catalog for 23, I'm sorry, 2024 through 2025. Okay, so Stampin' Up! is mailing my catalogs to my customers. So I ordered those this past weekend. So those are out. Don't worry, if your name was missed on my list or if you're a new customer, I will be, I have ordered all the catalogs to come to my house and I do have them. Um, probably next week sometimes. So I'll start mailing them out closer to the time when we leave for Mexico. This is the thing. I'm giving you guys all a heads up. And I don't know why Stampin' Up! did it this way. But I am offering a paper share. I just don't know when I'm going to be able to offer it. Because this is the scenario. The new catalog launches on May 1st. But those that earned the incentive trip for Mexico were leaving on April 29th. So that's two days before the annual catalog goes live. And Richard and I, and like many of us, we either go in early or we're staying late. So we're going to be gone for two weeks. So we'll be coming back mid-May. I think it's May 11th or 12th is when we'll be back. So I'm hoping that nothing is sold out by that time. So I'm hoping to do a paper share once I get back, all right? So please just bear with me, but this is just a weird circumstance that the annual catalog goes live and we're all gonna be on the incentive trip with Stampin' Up! So I have not forgot about you guys that like to do my paper shares. So just, you know, I will send out more information closer to the time when we get back. I'll have an email ready to go. So then um, you guys can sign up. And then when I get back, we can make a deadline of when the paper share due of the pre-order is due. And then I'll just go ahead and order it. Maybe I'll order it when I'm in Mexico. So then when I get home, I can have it here waiting for me. And then I can, me and Richard can cut it. I don't know. It's a little process I got to think it through. Because I'm not really wanting to work when I'm in Mexico. Because this resort that we're going to is pretty amazing. So, but anyway, I'm just bringing this up because I am aware that the, the catalog is going live on May 1st, but there's not going to be a paper share on May 1st. So, and that's the reason, because we'll be on the incentive trip. Also, this is the printable for the project we are making today. So, if you want the measurements and all the supplies, the, the supplies I'm using and I used on the other two cards are all current items. So they are either online exclusives or they're in the, the current mini catalog, all right? And they're all available, I believe, okay? But we're using the Latte Love for the sample today. All right, so before we get started, I want to show you something my husband got me. <laughs> yeah, I know this is like so silly, but we are in the glitter pit, so I just thought that this was appropriate. He bought me some unicorn snot. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, I don't know what to think about this. 
But Unicorn Snot, he got this off Amazon, but let me show you, it is so beautiful. It's actually body glitter, so it's like a gel consistency of like, you know, just putting it on your body and your neck, whatever. But it's so beautiful, and it's of course got a purple lid. But look at this. So it's like a gel, and then you just like can, like a little tiny bit goes a long way. Can you see all that glitter on my hand? Maybe not. But let me tell you, I can see it, and I love it. It actually doesn't really have a smell per se, but it is superly, it's super, it's super sparkly. So it's called Unicorn Snot. And I guess there's different colors, but he got me the, what is this one called? It says it's for body and face. I want to say it's the disco one, but I don't know. But it's the like multicolored one. It's very pretty. So thank you, honey. I love it. I just got it a couple days ago. So I've got it on my chest here. And now I got it on my hand. Can you see it at all? Let me bring it up close. Oh, yeah, you can see it right there. Woo! So pretty. All right. So are you guys ready to stamp this card? It's so awesome. Let me get all my supplies. And I did do a little die cutting. I want to share a little tip with you guys. All of you, you know, you guys are so amazing. All of you that took my love, the Latte Love card class. And that was over, that was, um, that was over like a few weeks ago. And we did, you know, private videos. Everybody, your feedback was so amazing. Thank you, everybody that loved the class and loved all my little tips and tricks that I shared with you. So here's another one for the books I'm going to share with you guys. So I'm going to take some scrap and I want to share this tip with you first because it's so awesome. So you'll see here my two cups. You see they're different sides for the handle and there's only one stamp. Let me show you here. This is the stamp set, Latte Love. And you can see the stamp, the handle is over on the right hand side right? And then the die only cuts the right hand side. So when the die is laid down onto the stamp, it's only going to cut the handle on the right hand side. Okay. So let me show you a little fix. So if you want your cups to be swapped around, let me show you a really awesome fix for this. Now, when I first seen this, it was with the glass mat, but I had figured out you can do it with your silicone craft sheet. So let me show you here. I'm going to get my Early Espresso Classic Ink. And we're going to stamp this cup, like normal, onto the craft sheet with your Early Espresso. Okay? So we're going to stamp that onto the craft sheet. And it's, it's actually, the silicone craft sheet works a lot better than the glass mat. Because when I did this with the glass mat... The glass was kind of like slippery, so the stamp really, I felt like the stamp didn't really stamp really, really good. But with the silicone craft sheet, it grabs it, and it's really, really nice. You probably, oh yeah, you can see that. So then you're going to take a piece of scrap, basic white, and lay that right over top of that cup. And then press that down or rub it across your image. And then you're going to pick that up, and there's your cup. Right? All right, but it's not over yet. I'm going to show you something. So then you're going to take your Stampin' Blends. I'm going to use Pool Party and Lemon Lolly. Well, I'm just going to use Pool Party. But if you use Lemon Lolly, it works too. So use your Stampin' Blends, and you're going to color, you know, your cup like you normally would. I'm going to color the handle in. And then I'm going to outline the, the cup like I normally do with my blends. Okay. And then I'm going to take my filler piece with my coffee. I'm going to stamp that with the Early Espresso too. And I'm going to stamp that right in the center of my cup for the coffee, right? All right, so now you're probably wondering, how am I going to die cut that when the die goes like this? Because it's still backwards, right? 
Are you guys following along with me? <laughs> so this is the trick. The blends, look it. The blends bleed through the back of your basic white. So then all you have to do is just take your dye and pretty much line it up with whatever marker you used. In my case, it's the pool party. So line that up. And seriously, it works like a charm. I'm not kidding. It's so amazing. So line this up and then run that through your die cut machine. And then you get your pool party cup with the handle on the left. Yay! <laughs> it's always the little things that impress us crafters, isn't it? I absolutely love it. So use that craft sheet and stamp it and then just, you know, flip it over and you can seriously cut it out. It does it. Perfect. And nobody would ever know. <laughs> Tell me you didn't know that tip. Please. <laughs> I love it. All right. So that's your first tip right out the door with the cups. You can flip the sides, right? And then, of course, you can just take, I got a baby wipe here. Just clean your silicone craft sheet off with, you know, a baby wipe. And then you're good to go. Yay! Don't you guys love the silicone craft sheet? All right, so I did do a little bit of the die cutting ahead of time and the greetings. I am using a brand new die collection for my greetings, which is going to be available on May 1st. And this die collection is awesome. This is the Unbounded Love. And I use this circle for the You're the Best Part of My Day. And then Hello There, Let's Catch Up is using this die right here. So that fits in there perfectly. Okay. So these will be in the brand new, brand new annual catalog on May 1st. And there is a stamp set that go, goes with it too, okay? So I did do that, and then I also cut out my little silver spoon. I will be doing some embossing because I need a little steam. And then our pieces of designer paper and cardstock. Let me give you all the measurements. The cardstock base is cut at 4 and a quarter by 11. We're going to score that piece. And then you're going to need a piece of designer paper cut at 6, 6 by 10. And we're going to score and cut this piece. This is for the, the pop-ups for the Stadium Wave card. And then I'm using three pieces of the same Latte Love designer paper, double-sided. These are actually the cups that I use to cut out for my pop-up pieces that are going to go on the inside. So all three of these pieces are cut at four by five and one eighth. So two are gonna go on the inside and then one for the front, okay? And then I did bring some scrap over to show you that I just hand cut out those. But there is a die, if you wanna die cut them, I just found that it was a little bit easier just to hand cut it out. There is a die that cuts out all these cups, which makes it probably a little bit nicer than what I did. But I just, Turned on a podcast and I just went crazy cutting out the coffee cups. No big deal. Okay. And then also I'm using a piece of early espresso for the belly band. This is cut at one and a quarter by ten. And we're just going to use that to keep the card closed. And then I cut out the deco rectangle dies. Let me show you those. These are the deco rectangle dies, and I used, um, let me see, this is for the small, whis not whisper, basic white, and then the next size up I used for the crumb cake. And this is just going to be the banner, or not the base, sorry, not that one. Is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. So I went two sizes down for the from the crumb cake to the basic white. Okay, this is actually going to get attached to your belly band like this one was. See how that's attached to the belly band? So when they slide that off, that's actually coming off with the, the belly band, okay? Okay. So I use the deckled rectangle dies for that. All right, let me show you something else. Now, one thing also in my class, for all of you that took it, thank you so much. I, you guys know I did a little die cut cheat sheet and I'm going to show you that right now. So this is the die cut cheat sheet that I did for the class. And if you want to take a snapshot of this with your cell phone or whatever, these are the pieces that you will need 
to build up to make your French press or your coffee pot or your cute little espresso coffee cups or your, you know, your larger coffee cup, okay? So if you want to take a little snapshot of that, I think that that's a lot of um, quick glance at that diagram to show you what, what you need to build these three pieces to make your, your French press, you know what I mean? Okay, so that's what else I shared with them during the class. So hopefully that was really helpful for you guys that did do the class. Because I know there's a lot of dyes in this collection and you're and you know you don't really quite see how they come together but with that little diagram hopefully it helped you especially with the coffee pot <laughs> because this is actually the handle right here and it's kind of like weird when you put it together but it goes like this like this is the handle over here and then the coffee pot tilts up like that so it goes on to your coffee pot like this Okay, all right, but we're not using the coffee pot or the French press today. We're just going to make the coffee cups. Those are the cute part of the card. All right, so let's grab our paper trimmer. We're going to do some scoring and some cutting for all our pieces. So let's score the card base first. Get these pieces stuck to my arm here. All right, let's take them out. All right, so this is your standard, um, I guess it's the vertical fold, which is cut at four and a quarter by 11. So we're going to score this at five and three eighths. And the three eighths is the eighth mark right before the half. So five and three eighths, and you're going to score. And then scoot it down the eighth mark past the five and a half, and that's five and five eighths. So it should give you a little bind of the card right there. So that's kind of giving you all the space for your um, stadium wave fold, fun fold card pop up. So that's going to allow the space for all those panels to fit into your card really nice. And then it's still flush at the bottom. So it's not your standard, you know, score at five and a half. So you're going to score it at five and three eighths and five and five eighths. All right. And then on your designer paper, because that's what we're using for today's card. I just want to show you that you can make this card with cardstock, but cardstock is a lot more um, thicker than your designer paper. So using the designer paper will make it a little less bulky. So when you're actually mailing this in the post office, it might help with the weight of the card. So this piece is cut at six inches by 10. Make sure I got this cut right at 10. Yes, all right, so we're gonna score on the 10 inch side across the top on your trimmer. We're gonna first score at four inches. Remember, you wanna score, not cut. Ooh. Oh, I think I just ripped that. Ugh. Did I? Maybe not all the way through. Okay, so don't press so hard like I just did. Okay, so score it at four. And then score it at eight. I do already have them folded and cut and everything. So I do have enough if I did rip it. So eight. And then eight and three-fourths. And nine and a half. And then I also want to share with you guys, Anna, when she made her um, balloon card right here, let me show you this because I want to explain this because you can make your panels up to eight, eight panels here. Anna, I think used seven. So when I had you cut your designer paper at six, that means we're going to only make six of the panels. And six fits really, really good. And it just depends. If you guys, once you start making this card and you want to add more panels for, let's say you want to spell out a certain word that has eight letters, you can make it eight, but you have to overlap it a little bit tighter instead of at half. You might just have to like squeeze it in a little bit. And once you make this card, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. So if you do want to use it for eight or even seven, then you're going to cut your designer paper at 7 by 10 or 8 by 10. 
You know what I mean? So the 10 inch is just the length of your, your um, tabs or your pop-ups. And then however many is how long or how wide you're going to cut your designer paper. So mine is six. So I'm making six panels and then by 10. Okay. And then on the 10 inch side, you're going to score it at four, eight, eight and three fourths and nine and a half. And then you're going to turn it on the six inch side across the top and you're going to cut in one inch strips. So one, two, and like I said, this card is really easy to make. It's just this part right here is probably going to be the most time consuming depending on if, you know, if you like doing fun folds and this is going to be right up your alley. But this part is not hard either. It's just cutting and then folding the score lines and gluing it together. But since you're making between six and eight of them, that's where the time-consuming part comes into play, okay? So you can see I have six little strips here, all the same. Oh, see, this one ripped. It did rip with my scoring. So I'll just put this aside. Let's just pretend I have six, but I'm only going to fold a couple with you, and I've already got them done anyway, so. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your strip, and you're going to fold your score lines like this. So this is your this is your nine and a half inch score line down here. This is where we're gonna put our adhesive right here. And then you're gonna fold it like a W. You see the W there? And then you're just gonna fold it in half at that four inch score line, okay? So you guys wanna see that right here like this. This is the way it's gonna look your um, pop-up section. Let me get my liquid glue. Liquid glue is great for this project because it's going to give you some wiggle room. So on this, what is this? This is only a half inch score line down here at the end. You're just going to add a little bit of glue down at the end. Ooh, ooh, mine is oozing out. Don't want that. Okay, so you're going to put your glue on the end and then I'm just going to fold this over into that W now, I'm putting my coffee cups on the outside, but you can just flip it over if you want this side out. You know what I mean? So then fold it in half. And then stick that end down onto the end of that half inch score line. And then it should be flat. Just like that. Okay? So this is the way it should look once it's glued together. So it kind of looks like a heart. Kind of. Do you guys see it? Okay, so we're going to do one more. Ooh, I got a glue there, too. I got to get that glue off that. We'll have a messy mess on my grid paper. All right, so let me fold another one. Again, we're going to fold the half inch and then down and up, just like that. Just like that. And then fold it in half. And then take your glue... Then I just like putting it right on the edge right here. And then I have a little area to put my fingernail to close that up really good. And then just fold it down. And it, and it seriously, with the liquid glue, if you don't use a lot of it, it will seal up pretty fast. Like I'm just pinching that together to hold it. And it should seal up pretty fast. Okay. Okay, one more and then we're going to move forward. All right. So again, we're going to fold that half inch over and then make that into a, a W right here. Okay. And then fold this over. I'm going to take my liquid glue and just put it right on the end. See that? Right there. And then I have a little area to hold that closed and flip it over. Just like that. Okay. Now, I've already got all of my six strips already done so let me bring in my other three so these are what those are going to look like okay all right now we're going to build that panel part now what you're going to be thinking of when you're making this section for the inside that makes the stadium wave card you're going to keep this folded end right here that looks like a pac-man kind of like that 
you're going to keep that closest to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my layers. I'm going to put a strip of liquid glue on the edge right over here. over here all right so I got a strip of liquid glue there and I want to take the next one remember all your strips are going to have those pieces right here at the end facing closest to you and then I'm going to overlap this just shy of half halfway in the center of that last or previous strip and then you want to make sure it's flush here at the top and the bottom and again, the liquid glue gives you some wiggle room, okay? And then, of course, use not so much glue because then it seals up a little bit faster. So then once again, we're gonna take the next strip, put a strip of liquid glue on the edge, right here, on that second strip there, and then take your next strip, and again, I'm going to make that flush up with the top and the bottom, and then about halfway across that strip. So can you see all my strips, how they're building up on top of each other? Now, if you're doing the eight strips, you're gonna have to move it over a tiny bit more. I would say over half, because you're getting more strips and they have to fit into this card base, your four and a quarter. So you can see how this is gonna fit here, right? So if you're putting seven or even eight strips, you're gonna to have to make your overlapping a little bit more narrow so it's not so much halfway. You know what I mean? So, but with six, it's like, it's good. Six is great for me. And then you're gonna put another strip of glue on that last strip that we just put on, keeping your the um, glued end closest to you and I know I'm turning it just so I can line it up with the top and the bottom but you want all your pieces to open up at the bottom so that would be closest to me like this okay and then you just continue to build your section for the inside of your card just like that Making sure it's flush at the top and the bottom. One last one here. Now you could always put this in the card and measure it out. Make sure it doesn't go past your base of your card, but I'm pretty sure this is going to be good. So this is with six on the inside. So you can see it's gonna fit perfectly. There's a little border of, you know, the, the crumb cake. Can you see that? I'm gonna actually put designer paper down too. So that's gonna be another guide. Let me go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put the, the coffee cup stain part on these two on the inside of my card. Remember these are cut at four by five and one eighth. And I'm gonna use my stamp and seal. This is just to add a little bit more decoration. You really don't. You're going to see one of my cards that I made. I did not put any designer paper in mine. So this is totally optional. You do not have to do that. But Anna did it to her, so I thought, I'm going to do it to mine. <laughs> like you guys would probably say, Dawn's going to do it to her, so I'm going to do it to mine. But you don't have to. Because I know our designer paper is very, very precious to all of us. We don't want to waste it, right? All right, so your four by five and one eight should fit on the top and the bottom perfectly, just like that. Okay, so you can see it's just decorating it. That's it. And then we're going to take our layer here that we just put together. And then we're going to put, we're going to, so this is, remember, we're having these panels go towards us, right? So we're going to flip this over. And we're going to put adhesive only on this very first strip on the back side over here and then we're going to go ahead and put this into the card and then again the liquid glue will give you guys some wiggle room so this ends up being the same size as the designer paper just a little bit smaller 
and you're going to line that up right up to that first score line right here. Remember we scored it at five and three eighths and five and five eighths. So right there. So this is the one that's sealed down with the glue. That's the only piece that you should be gluing down is this first piece that we started with the panel here. And then you're going to take the end piece over here and put liquid glue on that. And then you're just going to close the card and make sure that that gets glued on. Making sure to keep the same form of your card with this binder piece right here. And then just hold that close so that glues up and secures down really good. Might take a little bit longer than just the little strips. And then when you open it, look. Wait, let me see here. I just don't want nothing to come off because I didn't wait long enough. But you can see my six strips here. See how that opens up like a fan here? Oh, wait. There we go. <laughs> it did stick down. See how that looks like a fan, like a wave? You know, like a stadium wave, like you go up and you wave. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be like representing, kind of like that. Isn't that awesome? And then it folds flat. <laughs> Can't beat it. And then we're going to go ahead and put this piece. I'm going to use the other side. I'm like my other card. I put this side. I'm going to use the pool party side for the front of my card this time. And again, this is cut at four by five and one eighth. Should layer right onto your card front, really nice. And then it's just a matter of decorating the front, but I'm gonna actually decorate the belly band. So let's put the belly band onto the card. And the easiest, remember this is one and a quarter by 10. And I usually like to wrap my belly band to the front. And remember your belly band should be snug, but not too tight because you do have to have the belly band slide off and nothing's worse than having a too tight of a belly band you know you know what I mean all right and I'm gonna take my stamp and seal I'm gonna reinforce this with some dimensionals too and then wherever the seam is in the front here hold on I didn't do a very good job of that wherever the front is on the seam that's where I'm going to put my other layer. Hold on, I need more dimensionals. I need large dimensionals. One moment, please. <laughs> there they are. All right, so we're going to secure this seam right here for my belly band. You probably can't see it very good, but it is right there. So I'm just going to add a bunch of dimensionals there to secure that belly band closed. And then when I get ready to put my layer onto the front, it's just going to go on to the dimensionals. Okay. So there's the belly band. Then you on, slide it off. And then you got your, see this is really sticky. So let me show you here how you fix that. Okay. So if there is sticky part, because it does happen, just take your embossing buddy and just kind of go over the sticky part of the panels. Because sometimes it does ooze out and it might, you know, not really open the way you want it to. But it's an easy fix. Just find out where it's sticky at. You know what I mean? And then you won't have any problem opening it the next time. Okay? So now let's go ahead and put our coffee cups in here. My little espresso cups. You're going to need six of these. And let me show you. This is the designer paper I showed you earlier. Let me get my paper snips. And I tried to keep it like uniform, like with, you know, two yellow, two blue, two clips of coral, but it doesn't always work out that way. But you can seriously cut these cups out so quick and easy. And yes, it probably won't be as perfect as it is if you use the dye, but it's homemade. <laughs> That's all I can say. I just felt like I could do it a little bit faster with my snips. Instead of getting up and cutting each one of them out with the die. But that's totally up to you if you want to do it that way. Alright, so there's my little espresso. You know how they do it with the froth or the cream or the milk or whatever. You know how they make the cute little designs. So here's one with the heart. Clips of coral. There's one just with the little swirl. Then this one's like a little snowflake. These are all in the designer paper here. 
So I tried to, you know, oh, and then these here, remember I had shared, I think it was in the video too with my class that even though you're going to get some coffee cups, not quite like these, but in your pack, you might get like a full, a bigger size cup that's cut on the edge. You can still use these like I did in the class with you guys. This one will just go at the very top of your wave right here. And what I did for mine is I used the mini Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm just going to put one little mini dimensional on each of the panels. And I'm going to show you right where this one's going to go. So this one's going to go at the top right here. So it's right where that crease is going to go. Do you see that? So my cup that's cut, right? It was cut with the designer paper. So nothing goes to waste. I'm going to slide this right into that cut, not cut line, that score line, right? And then I'm going to stick that to that dimensional. And then you got to make sure you don't go over the side of the card or it doesn't show. You know what I mean? So, but even though it's cut, nobody's going to know like you, it was that way. It's just like it was meant to be that way. Okay. And then our next section right here is the next panel. So this one right here is going to get a dimensional on that one. Now remember your cups can't go past that score line right here. See that? Because that's the way the card is folding. See how it folds right here? And if your cup is over that fold line, then it's either going to crease your cup or it's not going to close right. And then, of course, you're balancing it between the side of your card so the handle doesn't show out or on the top. So just make sure you're balancing your cups between that fold line. Because see, then it folds up. So there's nothing hindering that fold line for your cup to fold flat like that. Okay? Now we're going to put another dimensional on the next panel right here. And this time I'm going to use yellow, a yellow cup. And again, I'm going to go right up to that score line. I'm actually going to turn it this way a little bit. Right up to that score line. Giving it a test run to make sure it's folding flat. And then you can tell each one of your panels too. Because you got your score line right in the center. So now I'm going to go with the Costa Cabana or Bermuda, not Bermuda Bay, but maybe the um, Pool Party Costa Cabana color. That one's going to go over here. So you can see how, oh, I'm going to move this one up a little bit, I think. Hold on. One moment. Let me move this one up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so you can see how it's cascading down, but yet it folds flat. Now, the closer you get to the bottom, the more you're going to have to really pay attention to your cups, the way they're positioned. So you might have to move it inward so it doesn't stick out on the edge. So let's do this heart one here. I'm going to move that over just a little bit. And before I actually seal it down, I'm going to make sure it closes good so there's nothing sticking out over here. That looks great. And then the last one is going to be the Lemon Lolly. So this one's going to go at the bottom over here. And again, paying close attention to the way the cup is sitting. I don't want this to go over the edge. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's perfect. Yay! So there's the cups with all the early espresso, or not the early espresso, but the coffee espresso cups. Isn't that awesome? I love it. And then, now you're probably wondering where you want to sign. Now I'm going to show you Anna's on where she signed, but I thought if I wanted to leave a message, I would just put another piece of basic white on the back and sign there. That's totally doable. That's the way I would do it. But then you can also add greetings, which is the two greetings that I have here. So this one is the hello there. Let's catch up. So I'm going to put this one on the front of my card. 
put dimensionals on that. And then this one, you're the best part of my day. And these are all in that same stamp set, the Latte Love. And you can put it up here at the top, or you can put it down here at the bottom. It just is so cute. I'm going to put mine at the top. So you're the best part of my day. So then that's not interfering with anything. The cups are nothing. Ta-da! I love it. All right, now let's decorate our little deco rectangle. So we're gonna we're gonna stamp. Actually, I'm gonna stamp the little coffee splatter and crumb cake around the edges. Oh, and I gotta do my um, steam too, really quick. I got that already on the block. So let's stamp the crumb cake onto the crumb cake. Kind of gives it like a watermark look. And I'm just going to stamp around the edges. Just around the edges. Hopefully you guys can see this. Because my basic white piece is going to go in the center. So I'm just adding a little stamped border around this crumb cake deckled rectangle shape. I'll show you here. So this is my coffee droplets or coffee splatter, whatever. And then we're going to put our basic white onto the dimensionals. I'm going to put this in the center of my crumb cake. And then my cups, remember how we stamped this one? It goes the opposite side, so that's really cute. We're going to put those on dimensionals. Just put one of those on there. And then put my coffee cup up here. And then my lemon lolly one down here. And then my other greeting here. Hello there, let's catch up. Is gonna go. You know what, this looks kind of like a Band-Aid, doesn't it? <laughs> and then, oh wait, I didn't take that backing off of that one. Okay, so then that is going to go there. And we're just going to slide this underneath there. And then a mini dimensional on my silver spoon. I still got to do this, the steam because the steam, you guys know on the class too, we used the steam and it was so awesome. It really made the card, I think. Made it look more legit. I think. And we're just going to take the spoon and balance that up on the side of the pool party one. And then I'm going to stamp the, that's my front of my card. Let's do the steam really quick. So I got my vellum. Vellum cardstock is retiring. What are we going to do? For real. If you guys want vellum cardstock, I think I have maybe a pack or two. I don't use it a lot. But it's one of those things that if you want it and you don't have it, it kind of is the pits. So even just getting a pack of it, you know, it's always nice just to have it. Just for this reason. Because I like it for the steam. Okay, so let me show you in the steam. For those of you that didn't take the class, the steam is right here in the stamp set. And we're going to stamp this with the Versamark on the vellum cardstock. And I took my embossing buddy to kind of prevent static. And you're not going to see it because the vellum, oh yeah, I guess you can. The vellum is also kind of like see-through-y. Not quite like window sheets, but the Versamark is like a water-based ink. Not a water-based, but it's, um, yeah, I guess it is water-based. But it's like a watermark. That's what I was trying to think of. A watermark ink so you can emboss. And then if you use, like if I use the Versamark on that crumb cake piece where we stamped the border, I could also use the Versamark like I did my crumb cake ink and it would do the same effect. It would just give a tonal, like a tone on tone type of look. So there's my steam for my coffee and I'm just going to grab my heat tool. We'll heat set that. Let me close up my embossing powder. Let me get my tweezers. Remember the embossing, what is it? Uh, embossing Additions Toolkit. You get your tray, you get the tweezers, you get the embossing buddy, you get a little paintbrush. The heat tool is sold separately and it does get hot. I just gotta warm it up. 
it gets super, super hot. So we're going to melt that powder into the ink and it changes it and makes it nice and glossy like that. Ooh. And then we're going to take our paper snips. I use the tweezers because I don't want to burn my fingers because that heat tool gets really super hot. So we're just going to take our snips and we're just going to follow that steam stamped image that I just embossed. Cut that out. And then we're going to take a mini glue dot. A mini glue dot. I'm going to put this on the bottom of the steam. Right there. And we're going to take our cup. So this one got the spoon, and then this one's going to get the steam on the cup. <laughs> Doesn't that look good? It looks so real. It looks so realistic. Seriously. All right. So then we're going to put that onto the belly band, which we already got here. Let me put this onto the card. And also another thing too is when you're sliding this belly band, because I made the belly band fit for the center, so it's probably going to be a little bit snugger if you slide it off the top, because remember we scored that up here to give that little binder there for all the, the cups here, right? So they're going to know to take it off from the bottom and then put the belly band back on to the card from the bottom. Because see, it's, it's too tight to go up off the top. See, it won't go. It's a little bit too tight. But that's what you want because you want your card to have that seam binding right there, right? Okay, so I'm just putting my belly band on the center of the card and then I'm just going to put my... Ooh, that looks so good with the pool party. Then stick that on to the belly band. Isn't it cute? And then you can slide that off and it comes off with the belly band. Ta-da! Do you love it? I'm telling you guys, when you send this to somebody, your family, your friends, you're going to knock their socks off. They're going to say, how did you do that? <laughs> And you can say, oh, it was so hard. I could just, I just couldn't, I could barely finish it. It was so hard. <laughs> but you guys know different. It's so easy. You'll, you'll be addicted to making this card. It's so fun. The best part would be to give this, per, this card in person so you can see them say, oh, whoa. Like I can see Griffey. He's saying, awesome, cool. That's what Griffey's new words are. Awesome, cool. Way cool. So I could see Griffey saying that when he opens this card, you know, because it's definitely a wow card. All right, let me show you the other cards. Let me just clean up my mess really quick so I don't lose any of my pieces. You guys remember when I lost my little coffee? Did you guys like the coffee cup tip? <laughs> I hope somebody learned something from that because I was like, oh, that's so awesome. I love it. Now, mind you, like I had said, I had done it with my glass mat, which I have in my office. But the silicone craft sheet works a lot better. So, all right. I think that's it for that stamp set. So, this is the Latte Love. And then you also can get the bundle. And these are online exclusives, remember? And then you have the a Little Latte is the designer paper, which is amazing too. All right. Alrighty, cleaning up my mess. Any questions before we move on? I'm going to show you my other samples. And then I'm going to um, do another glitter giveaway. Love the coffee kit. Oh, thank you, Charlotte. Hi, Karen. Joanne likes the tip. Thank you, Joanne. Such a great stamp set. I agree, Denise. It's so cute. I loved it as soon as I seen it. All right, and then again, here is your little die cut cheat sheet, I guess we could call it, right? Let me take that off there. Such a fun card, great technique. Thank you, Becky. All right, so this was the little um, 
die cut cheat sheet if you want to take a snapshot of that. This shows you the three pieces that you need to make the French press and the four pieces that you need to make the coffee pot. Now, like in my class, I used the coffee pot, this piece right here with the window sheet, and it looked really legit, like a real coffee pot. It was really super cute. But, yeah, it's really awesome when you see the dies really go together so nicely. All right, so let me show you again Anna's card so you guys can see where we all came from because Anna's was the inspiration for today's card. Thank you again, Anna. I just love your video. So this was hers with all the balloon paper from the Lighter Than Air designer paper. Isn't that beautiful? Now remember, she I think she used seven. So you can see from the side here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of her panels, right? And I believe you could go up to eight if you wanted. It would be really a little bit tighter. But if you're using eight, I would definitely measure as you go, you know, like when you're building your pieces to make sure they're tighter so they all fit inside your card. So now here is where I wanted to share with you what Anna did. So she took like a die cut and she added it to the inside of the card and then she just signed it on that instead of like putting it on the back. So that's another tip that you guys could do too, okay? And then she also added more balloons and clouds. It's just so beautiful. It's just like so much to look at. And then she's got her belly band. Thank you again, Anna. I just love it. So cute. And of course, I love that designer paper. Okay, so now let me show you the other two that I made. Let me show you the cow one. Now, if you, you definitely got to be a cow lover for this one. <laughs> right? Because you guys can imagine the inside of my card is going to be full of cows. So this one says, the little things you do make such a big difference. And of course, I got a cow on the front. Let me just show you this up close. I love the winking cow. This bundle's carrying over, but the bundle price is retiring. So if you want that, get it before it retires. But look, here's all my cows. <laughs> Yeah, this is the cow card for the cow lover, right? And I and I alternated I alternated the smiley and the serious smile, serious smile, serious face. It's just the cutest cow card ever. And then I put it's your special day. What's new with you? And those are from the cutest cow stamp set too. And it all look how cute it folds up, you guys. I'm telling you, you guys are going to have so much fun with this card. It's so cute. You can make these cards with the B, the B punch. You guys know that's a cute. I was going to make one of those too, but I ran out of time. So now let me show you the other one with the butterflies. This one is very plain, but, you know, it's still giving the whole wow illusion of the card. Because it's the stadium wave, you know, it's the whole... When it opens, it's like, wow. So I kept it very plain. But these are the paper butterflies. So I put two of the smaller ones on the front. And then the inside, it opens up to all the butterflies on the inside. Now the designer paper is from Celebration that just passed in February. I don't remember the name of the paper. But I went with it because it was pool party. But you can see that I did not add... The designer paper on the inside at all. I just added the pop-ups. Isn't that beautiful with the butterflies? And I put on the front, let's celebrate. So this could be a birthday card, you know, somebody that, you know, whatever. So it can be for, I mean, it's butterflies. So I'm assuming it's going to be like a spring something celebration. But it's so, so pretty. And I kept that pretty simple. It was just a matter of cutting or punching out those butterflies from that paper, this right here, that Rena's going to get. And you get all the different sizes of the butterflies. These are still currently available, and they do carry over, so those are in the mini catalog. But that one's kept pretty simple, but like I say on my blog tomorrow, it's not really the front of the card that's the wow, it's the inside that makes you go, holy moly, how did you do that? right? Oh, I love it. And that's what your 
when you send this to somebody, that's all they're going to do is like, and then they're going to look at it like, how did you do that? So, and I did six of them on all of my cards. So you can see six is plenty, but let's say you want to spell out a word like, you know, like a name, like Jessica, J-E-S-S-I-C-A is seven letters. So if I wanted to use like an alphabet and spell out Jessica, you know, you would have seven things. But if you have six, you can spell out H-A-P-P-Y, happy, and then maybe put a little circle down here that says day. You know what I mean? So you can really think outside the box with these panels here. It doesn't have to be like images. It can be letters. It could be like a special greeting. Like if you want to do a birthday card and you can do like a birthday greeting and all different kinds of birthday greetings in each of the panels. So it'd be like really a lot of birthday greetings in one card. You know what I mean? At least that's what my brain was going towards, all that kind of stuff. So, all right. Let me know which one's your favorite. I like to know. I do like the cow. I love them all. I think I love Anna's the best because she was the inspiration of the card, but they're all very, very cute. And I use the same paper for this one too. But yes, you can keep the front as plain as you want and then make the inside wow, right? All right, guys. Do you guys have any other questions? Uh, the score lines are on the download sheet. No, they're not. They are not. But let me tell you what they are again. The um, Let me tell you what they are. Actually, let me take a snapshot of this. This is my cheat sheet. <laughs> the crumb cake, you do have the score lines, but I did not write the score lines on the Latte Love designer paper. All right, so you're going to take your 6 by 10. Remember, the 6 is how many panels you're making. So if you want 7, it's going to be 7 by 10. And you're going to score this the exact same way. So you're going to score it on the 10 inch side. Don't mind my labels and the way I tell myself what I'm doing because this just works for me. So 6 by 10 and on the 10 inch side you're going to score it at 4, 8, 8 and 3 quarter and 9 and a half. And you guys can write that right on your, your project sheet. Okay. And then your base 4 and a quarter by 11 score it on the 11 inch side. At five and three eighths and five and five eighths. That's it. And then all the other measurements are there. So the only measurements I didn't get a chance to write on there were the scoring for the designer paper. So, and then you're going to cut them at one inch strips. So with the six, you should get six panels, right? Or six strips. So four, eight, eight and three quarter and nine and three quarter. And you can write it on your sheet once you print it out. All right. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. I love them all, but I think the cows are my favorite because they're just so cute. I know it. I thought, wow, this is like overkill with the cow. But then once they all come, it just makes me smile. Let's see all those cows pop up. Moo. <laughs> so, so cute. Everybody likes the cows. Yay. Six go to Jessica from Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking of like a name, you know, like even if you did father, F-A-T-H-E-R. Yeah, F-A-T-H-E-R. Yeah, you could do father or mother, M-O-T-H-E-R. Yeah, mother, you could do mother for like Mother's Day. You could have mother, like the initials is what I was thinking, like mother, pop it up, M-O-T-H-E-R. That would just be so cute, right? All right, the cows crack me up, Margaret says. Me too. You really do either have to have a really good sense of humor or really love cows. And I do have both. I do love the cows. And I'm really happy they're carrying over. All right. Thumbs up, everyone. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. My subscriber count is finally going up. I'm so happy. Thank you all that subscribe. When you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you should be notified, especially if you click that bell up in the right-hand corner. That's going to let you know that if you're if you're subscribed, you want to be notified. So then you got to click the bell and you want to click be notified and then 
supposedly YouTube will notify you when I post my video or when I go live here. So don't forget to subscribe too. Also, I notify everybody on my, well, I, I don't think I did it today. Did I do it today on Facebook? I was kind of run behind. But typically, I let you guys know on Facebook and then also in my newsletter and then also in my blog early in the morning. You guys check my blog and if I'm going live, which I typically am, unless they give you a heads up that I'm going on vacation or something like we are with Stampin' Up! at the end of April. Put in your calendars. I'm working on making some videos for you guys while I'm gone. So um, even though I won't be live with you at the end of April through the May, middle of May, I'm going to try. I've already got one video done. I'm going to try to work on a couple more. So, but all this takes time. So trying to still do all my normal stuff too. So just know I try to hit all the social media spots to let you guys know that I'm here live. And then also we come on a half an hour earlier on my um, YouTube channel. So all you have to do is just go to my channel and then you should see the video for the Glitter Pit live at 3 o'clock. And then click on that. And I'm trying to be on there by 2.30. So then you guys can join in the early bird chat. And this is where everybody comes in early just to hang out, drink their coffee, ask questions, chit chat with everybody. We have so much fun in the early bird chat. So you're missing out if you're not over there. So, um, and then also you can ask questions or anything too. So... And then, but please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and share the video with those that like to craft with us, right? The more the merrier. That's what I say. All right. So any questions about the retirement list, the last chance list, which is the retirement list. And then we also, I also have the list in the newsletter that you guys got about the items that are going up in price. Make sure you're looking at those items. I mean, even though it's like just maybe some things are going up a quarter, but there are some things that are going up like over $2. So definitely check out that list. Um, Stampin' Blends are going up a dollar. So, you know, a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there. But um, just give you guys a heads up on that. And then also this is the last week for this host code. So if you want to use this host, ho host code for a gift, um, for mid to late April, use this host code and then I'll be posting a new one next week. All right. I have no idea what we're making next week. If you guys have ideas or if you've seen something that you'd want me to make and put my twist on it, let me know. Also, this is my email. If you want to contact me for any reason, please email me here at dawn at the glitter pit. Com. That's my main email address. So that's the one that you can actually get me. I do have a business email that's just strictly for Stampin' Up. But this is the email that you can reach me at, all right? We put it to a jingle, a little song, that will help you remember to email me at dawn at the glitter pit .com. <laughs> oh, We love the glitter pit, don't we? And don't we love my unicorn snot? <laughs> <laughs> I'm being sarcastic, but I do love it. All right. Oh, uh, thank you, Mary. Okay. My favorite would be the coffee one. I love that one too, Karen. All right. No questions, you guys. I know we're on here for just over an hour, and we're at 6% on my iPad, so... I'm going to let you go. Let's do another glitter spinner really quick. Move these out of the way. Let me see. What did I bring over? I always forget. Here they are. Oh, these are. Oh, these are the purple ones. These are the purple fine shimmer gems. These are in the mini catalog currently. Thanks again for another great card and seeing you and all your glitter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Darlene. Thank you for joining me. I am so appreciative of you guys taking out time out of your day to hang out with me. You guys don't know what that means to me, seriously. And I've been having a couple really rough weeks, and I won't go into details about all that. But you guys, thank you for all your prayers and your encouragement. And just, I just cannot tell you how much I appreciate all of that. And you know what? Sometimes I feel like God tells you guys that I'm like going through something without even saying. 
but I'm feeling the love. And thank you so much for all your concern, your prayers, your encouragement. I really, really feel it. And it's nothing bad. It's just, you know, one of those things that I'm going through. Maybe one day I can share with you. All right, let's go ahead and do a glitter spinner. Oh, Sue, you like the cows the best? Ah, me too. Oh, my mom just sent me a message. She says, love you, my sweet daughter. Oh, my gosh, mom. <laughs> She's going to, as soon as I get done here, she says, you send me that link. As soon as you get done, I got to watch your videos. I absolutely love them. And then she's always like, I don't know how people can't love you. You're just so sweet and so awesome. And I'm like, Mom, please, you're my mother. <laughs> she's so cute. She's like, so she just texted me. So she's like telling me, send me the link. Because she's probably thinking, why aren't I done yet? I'm not kidding. <sighs> All right. Spinning the comments. Spinning, spinning. Oh, I love you guys too. We are like a big family here, aren't we? Who is that? Jean! Jean, do I have your address? Your last name does not sound familiar. So here's the thing, Jean. I need you to email me. I need another pin. Let me write your name out here. Jean... And it's G-O-E-R-L-A-C-H. Do I have your address, Jean? You have to email me here to claim your prize. Also, I'm waiting on somebody else that claimed or won a prize a couple weeks ago. I forgot to bring that over. Um, I got to make sure that you that I have your address. And I'm trying to remember who, what, who it was. Was it Brenda or something that won a couple weeks ago? It's sitting right by my computer. All right, so Jean, please email me here, and it's Dawn at, the at sign, you know, at theglitterpit.com. So sing it, Dawn at theglitterpit.com. So email me your physical street address, Jean, all right? This is your mailing street address. So if it's a P.O. box or whatever, I need to have your address, not your email address, your street address. And then I can send these out to you. That's it. I don't sell nobody's address. It's just for me to see. And I'll put you in my database. And then this is the great news. Once you win something here in the Glitter Pit from me, I will have your address all the time. So if you win again in the future, you won't have to email me. Or, you know, tell me your address because I'll already have you. All right? And then it makes it super easy. Now... Update your address if you move or if you guys become snowbirds or whatever. Email me your updated information so I keep abreast on everything. That goes for catalogs too. If you guys move and you guys have a different address when the catalog comes out, I need to update that. Okay? So I will say that in time with this new thing that's coming out with Stampin' Up! Because there are some changes coming with Stampin' Up! Stampin' Up! is making it... A little bit harder for you guys because they're making everybody get an online account so that's kind of nice because once you become a customer then I'll have your address too so but Jean please email me your address and then I can send these out now I usually hold these items for at least two weeks and then if I don't hear from you then I pay it forward all right and then of course if anybody doesn't like what they're getting as a gift or a little goodie then you can always say pay it forward and I can pay it forward. I won't be hurt feelings. There won't be no sad, no sadness, no nothing. It's just let me know. So don't leave me hanging. So I'm waiting for you to email me and then you don't. And I'm supposed to know that you want me to pay it forward. Just let me know either way. Okay. I try to make everything as easy as possible. I really do. Ask my customers about the FSM club and there's nothing to fill out, nothing to send back to me. It's just a matter of emailing me what you want with your address and the item. And that's it. So, I mean, it's really super easy. It's just, um, and that's what I want. I want it to be super, super easy. So, it's nice and simple to follow. Okay? Oh, there she is. Okay, good. She said she'll email me and then she gets my weekly newsletter. Yay! Also, many of you are saying that you're not getting the email. Please check your spam or your junk folder too because sometimes the email goes there. So there's like a little junk folder. Um, 
sometimes my folder's called archives, deleted, favorite, you know, it's all those kind of weird folders. Check your folders because sometimes they go there. And then worst case scenario, you might have to give me a different email address or sign up again with another email address because somehow it's going to bounce or um, it's just not registering your email, okay? All right, guys. Thank you again so much for being here. And I will see you guys next Wednesday, same glitter time, same glitter station. Don't forget, 3 o'clock Eastern, we'll be here live in the glitter pit. We'll be doing something fun, something cute, something who knows what we'll be making. But you won't want to miss it. Bring a friend or two or three. <laughs> I love you guys. See you then. Bye.